covalent bonding and drawing Lewis structures. All right, so let's just remind ourselves a little bit about chemical bonds and the octet rule. So remember, valence electrons in atoms interact to form chemical bonds with other atoms. And the octet rule is an extremely useful tool because basically it tells us that atoms like to have eight electrons in their valence shell. So they'll gain electrons, they'll lose electrons, or in particular for this video, they'll share electrons in order to have an octet. And one mechanism for obtaining a complete valence shell or an octet is by sharing electrons. And when electrons are shared between two atoms, they make a bond called a covalent bond. So that's what we're going to discuss today, how to draw structures that show these covalent bonds. So let's make a covalent bond between two hydrogen atoms. We're going to form H2, diatomic hydrogen. So Remember that hydrogen atoms only need two electrons to fill the 1s subshell. Then they'll have an electron configuration like the nearest noble gas, which is helium. Now each hydrogen starts with a single electron, and if two of them get together, then they can each share the other hydrogen's electron and form a covalent bond. So that's what these pictures are showing right here. So here's one Lewis diagram of one hydrogen atom. Here's another one of another hydrogen atom. They get together, they have two electrons there that they're sharing now, so they each have a full valence shell, which for hydrogen is two electrons, and they're going to form H2. Now this line here, I kind of snuck that in there, but basically that line represents these two electrons. It gets kind of laborious to draw out all these dots, and especially when the structures get large, so we just draw a dash to represent two electrons. And the final thing about this is that this bond is called a single bond. And so basically it's just sharing one pair of electrons. Now let's look at fluorine. Now there's a little bit different situation here because fluorine needs eight electrons to fill the valence shell. And it starts with seven electrons each. So if two fluorine atoms can get together, see how they have seven each, and they would like eight each, each of them has one to spare, so they can, um, they can share those separate, those two single electrons there, and then each of them has an octet. So here's an octet for one fluorine, and here's an octet for the other fluorine. Again, we can draw a dash representing those two electrons, and then see these electrons around here that aren't shared? So right here on, around each fluorine, those are actually called lone pairs. So they're unshared electrons and they're, they're called lone pairs. Now, what about a covalent bond between different elements? So let's go ahead and look at HF, so hydrogen fluoride. So each atom starts out with an odd number of electrons. So here's hydrogen with its one electron and here's fluorine with its seven electrons. It would like eight, hydrogen would like two. If they get together and share these two electrons, then now we have a bond here. So that's a covalent bond, shared electrons, and then these lone pairs, fluorine still has those. Again, we can change those two dots into a dash showing there's two electrons, and then here is fluorine with the, with the three sets of lone pairs. Now, when we're counting up octets, so here's two, four, six, eight, and for hydrogen, it's just here's two. So each of them has a complete valence shell just like they would like. Now, I've been showing examples of two atoms getting together and forming a covalent bond, but as you may suspect, you can have more than two, uh, basically, in a, in a structure. Now, each given covalent bond is only going to be between two atoms, but, um, and it'll still represent two electrons, but we can have more than one atom bonded to this central atom. So let's look at hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Now oxygen has six valence electrons, it has two sets of lone pairs, and then it has one that, it's, that is available basically to share with another atom. 
So hydrogen comes along, it has one electron. If it comes over here, it can actually share with oxygen. So hydrogen now has two electrons, it's happy. Oxygen has seven electrons, a little happier, but it wants eight. So what can we do now to fix that problem? Well, we can include a second hydrogen atom, and that's what it's going to take. So here's the other unpaired electron on oxygen. We can take a second hydrogen atom, and it can share its electron. And now we're going to have water. So we can see water has two bonds, or oxygen in water has two bonds to hydrogen, one to each hydrogen, covalent bonds, and then it has two sets of lone pairs. Now, uh, just to remind you, it doesn't matter which side the second hydrogen is placed, so if the paired electrons were here and the unpaired electron was down here, that would be totally fine. We would just place that second bonded hydrogen pointing down. Now, after this is done, we have two, four, six, eight electrons around oxygen, and each hydrogen is sharing two electrons. So every atom in this molecule, water, has a full valence shell, just like it would like. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's make ammonia. And so we're going to use Lewis electron dots, and we're going to show the covalent bonding. So go ahead and try that, and then um, unpause the video once you have your answer down. Okay, so what we're going to do is start with the electron dot diagram for nitrogen. So we're going to draw it. And notice that we have a pair of electrons on one side, and then we have three unpaired, and those are all available to make bonds. And if we look at our compound, we actually have three hydrogens that we're going to be able to bond. So this should turn out perfectly. So let's take each hydrogen, and it's going to share with nitrogen. It's going to share its electron. Nitrogen already had one single electron on these three sides. So now we have two electrons shared, two electrons shared, two electrons shared, and a lone pair. Two, four, six, eight, eight electrons around nitrogen. Each hydrogen has two electrons just like it would like. We turn those two dots into lines, and I obviously rearrange this just a little bit. I put the lone pair on top, and now we have ammonia. And so this is the Lewis structure for ammonia. It has three single bonds, and it has a lone pair. Okay, so just in summary, covalent bonds are formed when atoms share electrons, and we can use electron dot diagrams to illustrate this covalent bond formation.